Welcome to another edition of the Spotlight on Community Channel 6. I'm your host, Sherry Ann Noel. And during the Spotlight this evening, we're featuring a very important business on the western side of the island. It's called Mango Bay Grenada and it's located at Woodford St. John. And to discuss this business initiative in this very tranquil, just very nice area, I have with me the owner who's a young man and he goes by the name of Saisha Williams. Saisha. Welcome to the Spotlight and thank you for allowing us to come here at Mango Bay. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay. So tell us a bit about Mango Bay Grenada. I know that you're pretty young. Some may want to know why you sought to venture out into a business like this. Honestly? So I don't have to worry about my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> um, more to the point, uh, if you look on the West Coast, there isn't any business like this. and. The previous owners uh, just so happened to put it up for sale. We just were in the market, and some might say luck or good timing, but this particular place does everything I want. Um, it provides a nice, quiet, peaceful place for people to be, which is nice for me. Um, it also allows for you to do that. Through the ocean. Yeah. Um, and the, the things that we're trying to do, we're trying to have things like massage, yoga. Um, it's, it, it's almost like a holistic retreat you're trying to put out. That's why we, we decided to change from um, meat to vegetarian. Um, the previous eight years, this was run as, a, as a, a meat destination. Chicken, fish, whatever you want. Um, we took over July 1st, and from since then, it's been absolutely ITA. Um, and I haven't had any complaints so far about the food, so. Okay, so we know that you, you're Grenadian, but you were based abroad for a while, and some may want to think like young persons coming into Grenada, you came in during the time when it, it is considered the global recession, hard economic times, and investing in a business like this, um, tell us, um, what were some of the challenges in terms of executing at this particular time? Well. It's, it's weird. Um, I actually had to go to the comptroller for uh, an extension of concessions. Um, and a similar question was asked, and, I had to, and my answer was, the most difficult thing for a returning national in Grenada is a citizen that lives in Grenada. For some odd reason, we are very, 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 very prejudicial, it seems, towards our own countrymen once they're returning. Um, I don't know if it's to protect uh, your position, uh, your lot in life, your location. I don't know what it is, but there's something there that every hurdle imagined can be put in front of a returning national just to come in, especially when you're trying to come in and invest your money may not be much, but it is money that you're trying to bring away from them to here. We need money. I am coming to bring money. And you're making it absolutely difficult for me to spend my money. Why? And no one I've spoken to so far has had an answer for this. Um, I even went to GIDC when I first came in to get the concessions about this location and they didn't know it existed. Okay. Although on their desk was a brochure with my business listed on the third page. It, it, the most difficult thing is ourselves. Uh, on a, uh, because it's a, it, on the economy, I was, I've, I've been asked this question since I've been here a couple times and my, question, my answer always seems to be the same. The only stumbling block to progress and growth I see in Grenada is not outside investments, it's not uh, too smart people or too dumb people, it's we, the citizens of Grenada, for some odd reason, we are so divided on emotional, almost like a high school line, that we can't put our petty prejudices to the side and go, hey, for the country, we owe two billion dollars and we have no idea how we're gonna pay it back. Let's focus on figuring out how we're gonna pay back two billion dollars and then when we're finished, Let's complain about the guy wearing pink or the lady making noise down the street. And that's, that has been a very, very frustrating thing to, to me because I'm trying to spend money, but 
if I'm trying to spend money with you and it feels like you're trying to thief my money, I'm going to want to stop spending my money. If all the nationals, there's over probably 500,000 Grenadians outside of Grenada. I would say a good quarter of them are making upwards of 250,000 US. Can you imagine if we really invested that here, what would it look like? But half of us are terrified of coming home because we know what we're like to each other. To foreigners, we're really good. We're the most kindest, sweetest, most loving people. But for some odd reason, to our returning nationals, we scorn them, we treat them with this, with this jealousy or prejudice. It's this weird thing, and, and, and all we're trying to do is come home and go, I'm back, I miss you so much. Oh God, I love you. Go, go, come check out my place. Okay, so ap apart from getting all, all the, the concessions, and so you said that you took over the place back in June, July. July of 2011. Um, 12. 2012. So mm -hmm. tell us about exactly what sort of business you're offering here. Well, in terms of the, the tourist uh, industry, we offer everything that a tourist can possibly want, um, except actually sleeping with you. <laughs> we, um, we offer an absolute totally fully stocked apartment it's like a house you have a uh, stove fridge you have your own showers bathroom you have uh, king-size beds you have veranda you have uh, hammocks we rent kayaks s canoes snorkeling uh, we have two jet skis that are currently unoperable because or inoperable because it's so difficult to find quality technicians here to fix them. I've actually brought in two from America and they couldn't even fix them. So it's, it's very, very difficult to find something that, that, that works here. I'm in the process of trying to find another one, but um, we also have structures on the beach. It's, the waves just destroyed half my hut. I had a little bar on the beach and the waves came up and destroyed a piece of it. But there is benches on the beach that's covered with canopies, um, tables, um, we, we are in the pro we were supposed to get the alcohol license three months ago, we're still waiting for that. Um, so we can't keep any alcohol on the beach, but we do bring down alcohol with the guests of whoever wants it. Um, or if any boats show up and want some, we can cater to them. Um, we offer roadside assistance if you want to um, order your food and have us bring it up to the road for you, we can do so. Um, we actually are trying to get to the point where we have the burger mix can last, I think, five days in your fridge. And we have a, a food saver, it's like a sealer. Um, we package it and we label it and we bring it to your, wherever you want and we deliver it to wherever you want to. We want to start doing that with um, G uh, SGU and stuff like that. Okay, but you, you, you said to me earlier on that you were doing vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a broad market for vegetarian food, sir? Funny enough, currently, if you looked up, if you, look, if you search for any vegetarian eatery in Grenada, you would find none. That's listed. There is a few hole in the walls where people are doing their own thing from their houses, or there's a guy in town that does like pizza, um, and it's literally just a little hole. Um, but no one is actually giving you a menu of, of items. No one is actually gives, and Nowhere else in the country offers what we have in terms of vegetarian food. A place to sit, eat, and enjoy quality food that was prepared with organic material and not some chemical lading crap. Okay. Yeah. So is it that in, in, in the near future you're looking for expansion because I realize you have a lot of acres of land here? Well, yes. We are actually permitted for two more cottages and a swimming pool. Um, it's the months we took over, we didn't realize that for the eight years that they were running, they never were open between the months of July and August. So we took over July 1st and was ready for business and there was no one here. Okay. <laughs> so um, our advertising is much better now. Um, we advertise with um, Grenada Explorer. We're on, um, there's a website called uh, Reggae Festival Guide. We're advertising on them and there's a couple other places we're advertising. Like I said, we're trying to get the sign up so people can see it. Um, and business has picked up uh, uh, considerably within the last month, actually, um, which feels really good. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Uh, in, in terms of job creation, mm -hmm. as it relates to Mango Bay, um, how much were you able to assist in the unemployment situ in situation? 
Well, that's interesting. I've had, let me see, one, two, three. I've had at least eight different people work for me already. Um, the problem, like I showed you earlier, is consistency in keeping them. The turnover rate is high. And for a country that is reeking with unemployment, I do not understand why is it that people are not seeming very interested in keeping their job, but they're very interested in getting a job. Everyone wants a job. Everyone is seeking a job. Yet no one with a job seems to be interested in keeping it because of your performance. So away from this, let's take another business. I went into a business to get some lumber the other day and I walked in and I was supposed to bring a paper to one lady, whoever was in there. There's no uniforms. I don't know what's going on. I stand in the business. I'm like, okay, everyone is chatting. Da -la 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 -la. And I'm in there five minutes. No one says nothing to me. People are looking at me like, okay, I didn't come to steal. I came to buy. Can someone help me? A guy comes, I say, good morning, can I help you? Yes, that is what you can help me with. Customer service. Like actually caring about your job and the people that come in to spend their money with you because they, they are paying your bills. And a lot of the people, um, because of the, the economic difficulties in the beginning, I've had to let go of. Some of them I just had to let go because we couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't keep you. Your, your, the, the level of standard I have for this place is really, really high. Um, and to, to work with me, if you're not caring enough about that level, you, you can't work with me. I don't care who you are. You will, you will not work with me. I will not accept substandard in my place. I won't accept it in my home. I won't accept it as my friends. I won't accept it as my neighbor. So why would I accept it to someone I'm paying? So what, what are some of the areas that you're offering here? Well, so right now, we need a chef, um, uh, a qualified quality chef that is serious and committed about being consistent with high standards. Uh, please show up. Love to talk to you. I've, like I said, I've had a couple of already came through and it's the open door policy. You come in and you go. And it's like, okay, are you going to come back? I pl please come back. <laughs> um, chef is definitely one of them. Chef is the highest on my, on my issue right now. Um, like I said, I have my friends helping me cook. But because I can depend on them to cook. Okay. <laughs> So in, in terms of the, the restaurant aspect, I know you said it's vegetarian and so, but um, opening to the locals, um, locals welcome, what yes. time you operate here? Um, right now we operate on a, on a reserve, reservation basis. Um, if you call us and you let us know uh, a couple hours, in the, at least two hours, three hours in advance, what you're looking for, we can serve you. Um, if you call us the day before, we'll, we, you have the best service. Um, the only reason is because we, we don't have enough advertising in Grenada itself to, to justify opening up specific hours and just having it open and people coming. Because of our location, you're not, you won't basically see us from the street unless the sign is up. So until we get the sign up and proper advertising, it is best that is done by reservation. Just so, because the one thing I don't want to do is promise you something and can't deliver. I rather don't promise you anything at all. Okay. So, um, where can they go to register, even though? Oh, mangobay.com. To, to make reservations, and you can yeah. mangobay.com. Mangobay.com. My phone number is listed. It's 444-3829 or 535-6827. Either one. Um, but mangobay.com is the easiest place to go. And... All the phone numbers, all the contact information is on there that they can contact and make reservations for, for the restaurant. Um, we charge currently, because it's the peak season, we charge uh, 125 a room, uh, US, a night. Um, for locals, um, we would do 100. <laughs> 100 US. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So based on, you've been here for a while, back on foot, but you know back home to stay. Um, based on the economic situation, I think, do you see viability for... Mango Bay and other such businesses? Yes, um, absolutely yes. However, it is a contingent again on the people. And 
I would say this. I came in and I talked to the GIDC and they said we're, we're dependent, 84% of the GDP is dependent on tourism. And I had to laugh. She's like, why are you laughing? I was like, there's not even 84% of my country that has a sidewalk. Okay. How are we dependent on tourism? Are we serious? Are we joking? Which one? If we're serious, build a sidewalk. If we're joking, keep saying that. And eventually, within about five or ten years, we'll keep saying we're tourist based and we will keep losing money and finding less jobs and more poverty and more violence because when people don't have money they get violent when people don't have jobs they don't have money they get violent they, I, I would suggest that and someone can argue or debate me on that the increase in violence in my country is, is solely based on the fact of the employment issue and the literacy rate in my country. I heard someone running for office just the other day said, uh, the liter we have about a 40% literacy rate in my country. And the particular party that he was represented should play to that. Um, try not to use too sophisticated words and, 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 and the like. And I thought that was very, very, very disheartening because what you're saying to me is I should dumb down my countrymen and use them as we've been doing for about 75 years. And if we're a nation of 100,000 people, GE employs more people than we have in our country. They made three billion lastly on taxes alone. How come we can't make that? So the, 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 the things that, if, if we're really going to improve on tourism, which I think we can, we need to seriously, like grown-ups, put on our big boy pants and start acting like grown-ups and stop with this childish boogeyman fear of whatever and actually sit down and concretely come up with ideas that make money for every citizen of this country, whether they voted for you or not. So, um, have you made links with the Board of Tourism and so forth as it relates to this particular business? Speaking of, I actually just became a member November 27th, I think, or December 27th. I think it's November 27th. I, the Hotel and Tourism Association, we fi we're finally members now, and I think we're members of, uh, is it Commerce? No, uh, GCIC. Yeah, we just became okay. members of those guys. Um, because I've been, that's what I mean by the advertising. I've tried to reach out to the hotels in Grenada before, and I was roundly shut down um, with a quick click. We cannot even talk to you because you're not a member. I was like, but click. Hello, I'm Mango Bay calling. Uh, are you a member? No, click. Ooh, all right. So I couldn't do any advertising with them. I couldn't try to cooperate and make anything happen. So I literally, all whatever money we made from July till about a month ago was all based on either people knowing right, word of mouth, yeah, or just getting lucky. So now that you are a member, um, how far do you intend to take the advertising? Oh, well, we're trying to take it really far. Um, for example, one of the things we're trying to do is where we can either negotiate with some of the hotels where if they want to set up parties of six, eight to ten people, we can come pick them up, bring them to the cottages, we can serve them food, drinks, snorkel, kayaks, uh, we can take them to Concord, anywhere, Black Bay, we can give them all kinds, uh, it, it's all inclusive. Um, and all that can be done in one day and we can drop them back off, all for a fee. Um, we also offer tours of the island and stuff like that. Um, we do pick up and drop off from the airport. We, there isn't much we don't do. So therefore you already have a big team then, if you're doing tours of the No, island, we don't. So That's the problem. So who are your tour guides? Who are the ones that speaks of the different locations? As a matter of fact, we haven't even done a tour yet. We so offer in tours. So all those are stuff in the pipeline to mm -hmm. be offered by Mango Bay. Mm -hmm. um, there is one guy I have right now. Um, his name is Ired. You, you must like, you know of Ired. Um, from Tongue, Wally. Because of his, his connections and his, his dealings in terms of being in the water, being in the bush, knowing the country well enough, um, I've recently been working with him and I've come to the conclusion that if I do any tours, he's most likely going to be my tour guide. Okay. Yeah, it'd be nice to have him do that. Um, right now he's up in Mong Morris on the farm because um, we're trying to start it back up again to 
all the foods that come here, I wanted to serve from my garden or from a gardener that I know in my community. Um, why? Because it helps promote business in the community. If every so, for example, this community right here, and you asked earlier about uh, developing the economy. Um, the young man you just saw, he works on the beach um, as, and I wanted it specifically this way. I did not want him to work for me. Um, there was a group of guys, young men, that was on the beach. They saw me the first day and I was cleaning up and I was like, well, hey, there's no opportunities in the neighborhood and you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, honestly, I don't think so. I think there's a lot of opportunities here. I just think the way in which we go about taking advantage of that is, 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 is different. So we fish the bay with a big net, which destroys the bay and destroys the fish. If we keep doing that, we won't have a bay, which the tourists come to look at. If we use pots, we can actually keep them fish alive. And if they don't sell, we can keep them till the next day and the next day. That way you preserve the beach for the tourists. When they come, you can sell them fish, live fish, not dead fish. Um, the same thing with the bar and the, the structures. If we build structures down there that people could relax, you can make money. When the tourist boat comes in, if you had coconut, mangoes, anything that, that we have that's local, that you could bring there, they will buy. And they will buy it in abundance. That is a way you make your money so that you don't have to depend on me being your boss or having to pay you. You are your own entrepreneur making a business. So eventually, maybe you could take that and take it someplace else, transplant it to another beach get another community involved like you did instead of feeling like you are are under me i i've i grew up in grenada and there was a lot of under me happenings it's still happening you see it when you come in at the airport you see it on the port if if you don't count out to the right head you're not going to get anything done and i think that's a detriment to grenada because we are very creative people we're very intelligent but that kind of behavior keeps us timid and, and, and down when we should be looking at each other in the eyes as individual as independent equal people I don't just because you're a female I don't feel like you're any less than me just because you don't have as much money as me don't feel I don't feel like you're less than me because I don't have the kind of statues you have shouldn't mean that I should like be beneath you I have something to offer just as well as you do it just may not look the way you do very well so if you there are other young persons who may have little business ideas and so on. What is it you would say to them? Because they, they may look at the times, as we said before, the economic challenges, mm -hmm. and look at that as a damper. So if, if you're going to speak to younger persons as, like yourself who would have the vision and the idea but just can't make that step forward. It's funny. There's a statement that, that, that is so perfect for this, but I can't remember exactly verbatim how it goes. But basically, uh, failure is the biggest opportunity you'll ever have. Okay. Um, when we fail, we can either look at it, and like I've said this to my wife when I first met her. In the world, there's points of light, right? And each one looks really, really small. If you're a point of light and all you stare at is darkness, all you will see is darkness. However, if this little point of light and that little point of light and that little point of light came together, it will shine brighter for all the other points of light that are just seeing darkness. And prayfully, they'll gravitate to that light and make it brighter. Um, for young people in Grenada, there's two things I would say. One is to the elder folks first. Please do me a favor. Stop destroying the future of my country by abusing my young people emotionally and educational wise. We, 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 we seem to have this thing in my country where everything is based on fear. And if I don't fear you, I don't respect you. If I don't fear you, I don't produce. If I don't have this fear, nothing happens. We need to have a change of that where people are doing things because of love, of happiness. I want to feel good. That's what's making me do. I get up in the morning, I go to work because it makes me feel great. I go to school because it makes me feel great because it will provide a better opportunity. Not because I'm scared mommy's gonna beat me. I don't do my homework and try to get it right because I'm scared the teacher's gonna beat me. That's not learning. That is, that is, that is parrot and a monkey. We're not parrots and we're not monkeys. We're human beings. 
teach us to think, to analyze, to be critical thinkers. Half the people I've been introduced to in Grenada right now cannot critically think about anything. They can parrot everything, great. Okay. But they can't critically think of things. That's one of the reasons that we have problems that we have. So, for, so example, if we're 84% dependent on, on tourism and we only have about 20% of the country uh, with, 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 with sidewalks, how are we critically thinking about that? Did anyone give that critical thought? No. We had, oh, you need it for the areas that the tourists are in. But the tourist wants to go everywhere. When I asked this question the other day. When a tourist bus leaves the port with 150 passengers in it or whatever, let's say 50 passengers, and they drive where they're going, and they stopped on the 15 spots that they are destined to stop on, how much opportunities did those 50 people get to spend their money in Grenada with Grenadians? 15 times. If there were sidewalks, and decent roads to drive on, how many different stops would the tourists make then? How many different opportunities, not that they will spend, but how many opportunities will they have to then spend their money in country? A lot more. So if we're gonna say we're dependent on tourism, let's get serious about it. Invest in the infrastructure of tourism. If we're gonna say to young people, you're wasting time, you're wayward, you're a criminal, you're a this, you're a that. Invest in their education so that when they come out, the infrastructure is there for them to apply their trade. That's right. But right now, we're graduating about 4,000 children, and we have nowhere to send them. And then we turn around, incriminate them, because an educated mind is most likely going to find crime to profit from. It's the easiest thing to profit from. Okay. Well, Saisha, we're basically out of time, but um, any final thing you would like to say to the viewing public as it relates to Mangobi? Come join us and enjoy the best place in all of Grenada, honestly. If anybody in Grenada can show me a better place than Mango Bay, I will show up for a night. But there isn't. See you soon. That's all the time we have with you on this edition of the Spotlight here on Community Channel 6. We're on location at Mango Bay at Woodford St. John. I'm Sherry and Noel. Hope you were made away of another place that you can come and spend the evening, spend the night right here in Grenada. Until next time, thank you very much for viewing the Spotlight.